While retirement is generally seen as a time of relaxation and self-focus, God calls us to love, serve, and help others for a lifetime. He has been preparing us for this retirement season literally our entire lives. In retirement, countless Christians enter a state of spiritual dormancy, not knowing how they are called to have an impact for God's kingdom. The Retirement Reformation seeks to encourage and empower the 50 million Christians approaching or in retirement to embrace the calling God has been preparing in them. When the world says it's time to stop, you can begin to have your greatest impact. Welcome to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, where our goal is to journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Did you know that when you retire, your calling doesn't retire? Your calling is a lifetime calling, and if you're still around, God's not done with you yet. I know you are fully aware of what you retired from, but what did you retire to? You've tuned into I Retire For Him, the voice and resource of the Retirement Reformation, an organization dedicated to you, the retiree, who loves Jesus and wants purpose for all of your days, especially the ones ahead of you. Bruce Brinesman joins us today as the founder of the Retirement Reformation. He is here to encourage and walk with you through retirement. I'm your host, Jim Brangenberg. Check us out online at retirementreformation.org and on Facebook, Retirement Reformation. You know, it's no joke when my retired friends say to me, growing old ain't for sissies. Growing older has all kinds of challenges that come with it, but also tons of possibilities. In the last 60 years, retirement has gone from a few years to almost an average of 30 years. Sometime during those 30 years of retirement, a common theme arises. It's called isolation. Isolation leads to many bad things, such as loneliness, addiction, divorce, bankruptcy, and suicide. We start today a five-part series dealing with the impacts of isolation in our gray years. We'll begin with talking about isolation leading to loneliness. Rest assured, we'll bring you the truth and in that truth, the freedom to walk away from loneliness and isolation. Bruce, my question to start us off today is, where did all this isolation come from? Isolation comes from a whole variety of places. Um, the, the, the area that I think is the most concerning is that the re, is is the isolation that comes from turning inward as your world shrinks? So we know, and because you mentioned in the opening that retirement now can maybe thirty years, and so in that extended period of time, it's just very natural that our world will shrink. Well, why is that? Well, people move away, friends die, uh, spouses pass away. Uh, the issues that we'll talk about later on, and in another uh, another one of our uh, podcasts uh, about divorce. And so there's so much time for all these things to happen. And the net result is that shrinking world and then finding ourselves isolated. And we may be isolated in the midst of a crowd, but isolated nonetheless. Was it this bad before COVID? Because I know COVID resulted in alienation and isolation of millions of retirees because they were afraid to go outside because they were going to die. Was it this isolation thing, was it as bad before COVID? I really think it was. I think what COVID did was brought it more to the surface and added a, a shining a spotlight on it for how individuals reacted and families reacted, how our culture reacted. And so I, I would be, I would hesitant to say that COVID was the cause, but it certainly accelerated what has been true for uh, 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 for an extended period of time. It certainly drew attention to it for sure. So what exactly does loneliness look like in our seniors? I think what loneliness looks like is, is, the, is the sitting on the couch and wondering why you're there. I think loneliness looks like going for a walk with your dog and wondering, why is my dog my only friend? I think loneliness looks like, gee, I moved to X uh, because my kids and my grandkids are there, are here, but I never see them. Why is that? Uh, I think it's the, the loneliness and our isolation uh, looks like, you know, the connection you've had with long-term friends and their lives change or they pass away. And so, again, it's that withdrawing and separation. And I then I think the emotional response, the emotional issues of isolation 
are that question of why am I alone? Mm. So is it possible to be lonely in a crowd? Oh, it sure is. Okay. And we've Absolutely heard that be before. Lonely in a- but what about well, it? Well, the- oh, go ahead. Yeah. Let me, let me give you an example Please. that took place about an hour ago. Uh, Judy and I went and uh, had l- lunch at a senior facility uh, to check out their food, frankly. We, we like to call them senior communities. Okay. Senior communities. We can go with that. Uh, at a senior community, and uh, in the in the dining room, very nice dining room, great facility, but there was there were people in groups in many of the tables, and there was one table where a woman was sitting all by herself, and so here in the midst of a community of maybe you know five six hundred people, she was there, and it was clear that she was very very lonely, and I stopped and chatted with her for just a moment, and. I introduced myself and I said, you know, we're, we're kind of checking out your facility here. What, uh, what is it that you like best about living here? And she looked at me with a really sad face and said, not much. I said, wow. She says, no, the food's good. The help is nice. And the other people always say hi to me, but I really, I really am lonely. Mm. That's devastating. Uh, it is devastating. I, and I'm glad uh, you let just... me give you let me give you one more just to so and I, I'm sure our audience is connecting already and have their own stories that they could add to this. But on our our Facebook group, uh, we're now just over I think seventeen, almost eighteen hundred members. And when we ask them to introduce themselves and why are they joining the group, I, I don't have the actual count, Jim. But my my observation would be that it's probably in the 30 to maybe 40% group of people will say they joined the group because they were lonely. Mm. And that lonely is part of isolation. You know, in this series, this five-part series, we're, we're talking about isolation, which leads to loneliness, which leads to addiction, which leads to uh, divorce, which leads to bankruptcy, which leads to suicide, the gray suicide, something that's just staggeringly skyrocketing in this country. Let's talk about isolation for a minute. We got about a minute and a half left in this segment. Let's talk about isolation because that's different than loneliness, but yet it's related. When you think of isolation, I think of people being locked in their houses and they can't go outside because of COVID. But isolation's even more than that, isn't it? It really is. Particularly that the isolation is a term that relates, I think, to men. For women, they'll describe their situation as being lonely. But for men, if if I ask them, so are you feeling isolated? And they'll go, no. And I say, well, so tell me what's going on. Uh, Well, my two best friends died. My kids moved away. This happened. This happened. And I say, you know, that sounds like you're kind of isolated. And they'll kind of look up and think about that for a minute and go, you know, yeah, I really think you're right. I really am. And then they will simply, and they will often add, and I need to do something about that. Hmm. Well, and that's what I want to make sure that we talk about, because as we go into segment two, we've got a great interview with Bobby Albert. But in segment three, I want to talk about, can isolation be eliminated? Is, is it even possible, Bruce, to eliminate isolation? Well, I think we, it certainly can be addressed and can be impacted, whether we can totally do it. And, we want to, and we, in, that, in that segment, Jim, we want to talk about the role of the church in this also. Mm, well, I can't wait for us to have that conversation. You'll send it to I Retire for him. As we really dig deep into a five-part series on isolation, which today we're talking about isolation, which leads to loneliness. When we come back in segment three, we're going to dig into the truth that will encourage you on how can isolation be eliminated and how can loneliness be eliminated. And, and maybe this podcast isn't specifically for you right now, but it's for you as you deal with aging parents to be able to understand how they're feeling uh, and to be able to figure out how to help eliminate some of this in their lives. You're listening to I Retire For Him. We'll be right back. Recreating Retirement is an interactive small group study helping you to move from nothing to what's next. You can join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. East Coast time on Facebook Live. Our goal for this study is to provide a group setting for interaction and new ideas while leading you through a first step in your journey from retirement to reformation. Here's the big idea. During the next five years, 5,000 small groups will experience this journey of discovery in churches and faith-based organizations across the country. Is your church a place where recreating retirement needs to be planted? Join us online to experience the study 
or prepare to lead a small group at your church or ministry. Email us at contact us at retirementreformation.org or go to our website at retirementreformation.org. That's retirementreformation.org. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him. As we do in every middle segment of every show, we've got a special guest joining us to share their story of how they're living out their faith in their retirement. Bobby Albert is here for us with us today from valuedrivenculture.com, valuedrivenculture, valuesdrivenculture.com. Bobby Albert, thanks for being with us today. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you again since I just saw you just a couple weeks ago, so. Talk to us, Bobby, about what you, before you quote unquote retired, what did God have you doing? Well, uh, you know, that's an excellent question. Uh, 36 years ago, uh, the Lord laid on my heart to see my work as a ministry and not a job that I went to every day. Now, you know, I I started asking the Lord, okay, uh, now I've declared it. What, What does this mean? And it's just amazing how that took old, took on such a flavor in the culture of our company. And originally, it was uh, I was at that time I was teaching high school boys mainly most for over thirty years, and most of the time it was twelfth grade boys. But there was a Bible study I was using. And uh, I was thinking, man, adults need to know this. So <laughs> I just started having a weekly Bible study. Well, I was shocked how many employees showed up. And so the ministry started out internally for the employees. But over the years, we began to learn how to minister to customers and suppliers. Some people mm-hmm. may call them contractors because uh we were uh we were dealing with multiple of tens of thousands of customers and we had about 3000 contractors wow uh, uh domestically in the United States a few internationally so tell what was the result when you started really in, uh, investing your life into the lives of the employees and the contractors and the vendors what was the result how did it impact your company well <laughs> I tell you what, Jim, I, I was, I was shocked, uh, how it, it, the impact it had on our people because, uh, you know, uh, prior to that time, uh, be honest with you, I, uh, I thought Bobby Albert was the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, but when I began to see the work as a ministry, I turned the organization chart upside down and I began to serve, equip and develop the leadership team. They knew they had to have the responsibility to do with, uh, do that to the people that reported to them all the way up to the frontline people were at the top of the organization chart. And even above them was the customer, and at the very top was Jesus Christ. Mm. And it was based on uh, Colossians 3, 23, and 24 uh, was the foundational verses that we kept in our company for all that time until I sold the company to a publicly traded company. But let me just say this. with a lot of people helping, especially our employees, is uh, the last six years of the company uh, is that we grew revenue and profit by 500%. And it wasn't because of Bobby Albert. It was because of our people. And that's what I like. Boy, that's what drove me to share what we do today. So, when you retired or sold the, you sold the business, right? When you retired? Yes. So were you, were they able to keep the culture going after you retired? Well, that's a interesting question because this publicly traded company, I mean, they had some high powered people that were looking at it as a financial buy. Right. But after they bought us, 
uh, they started asking me, uh, Bobby, where did you get these people? And I said, well, we just hired them and grew them. Well, what I learned later on is our the capabilities of our leadership team would compete against their top executives of this multi-billion dollar hmm. uh, publicly traded company. And uh, just just a little proof of the pudding is uh, our my our COO, our chief operating officer. Well, shortly after they purchased us, they promoted him to become the COO of a billion dollar division. And, and it was the fastest growing division in the company. And uh, later on, they promoted him again to the corporate office uh, in the human resource area, the HR. He's the number two person there. He has over 200 employees that he oversees. And guess what? His responsibility is because they have over 16,000 employees. His responsibility is to bring the Albert culture into the organization. Uh, one other thing, just uh, less than a year ago, our IT guy, uh, they transferred him to the corporate office. And he called me about a year ago and he said, Bobby, guess what? I am now the chief information officer. I have over 500 employees that I oversee and he's, he's overseeing all of the IT hmm. for the total organization. So the people that you trained up and discipled and mentored are now having huge influence over this buyers group that took over your company. That's fantastic. You've taken that idea and have created an organization, values-driven culture, so you can help other companies do the same thing. How is, you know, that's how you're spending your retirement years, investing your life and what you've learned into other people. How's that going? Well, I wish it was going better, but uh, the thing that I could be honest with you, I probably couldn't explain it back then before I sold, but I've, I've learned some things since uh, I've taken on what I call my second half of life, but actually I was living my second half of life while I was running the company. And what it is, is I learned how uh, to be a good shepherd at leading the people at the same time while I was being a good steward of the things, managing the things of the organization. Because we never did back off on the driving for the results, but we learn how to engage our people, uh, not only in the decision making process, but it was how we, uh, what we said and did in the organization. And that's what I teach. So as you look at your retirement years so far, you're, how old are you this year? Well, I'm 70 years old. 70 years old. All right. Has retirement been like what you thought it would be? Well, it's been busier than what people say, you know, once you retire. But I tell you what, uh, it's something when the Lord, when he made me, uh, he put some things in me in the ingredients there that I'm very impatient. I have an entrepreneur spirit. Uh, there's another little ingredient in there. I, I tell people I'm A D D D D D D D, and I've got to keep going. So, you know, until the Lord withdraws that last breath, and He knows what that date is out there, but until He does, I'm just supposed to be a fully devoted disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm, fantastic. All right, we got a lot of people listening today. It's so exciting what you're working on. Faith or values driven culture.com value driven values with an S driven culture.com. Bobby, there's a lot of people listening today that are approaching retirement. They're getting ready for retirement. Any advice for them? If I may suggest this, uh, is to discover your core values and your life purpose on a personal level. And uh, the it, it, it's not easy to discover what I just said, but uh, I have I I tell you what uh, when I still had the company 
it, I went through a lengthy, several years of going through this process of discovering my core values, who I was. And, and then we had a method that we used to introduce it to our employees. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, about, uh, I'd say uh, about 30 years ago, the Lord gave me what my life purpose was. It, it's what he implanted in me when, when he was, you know, working on those ingredients uh, on me, and that was to be a model Christian businessman. And so, I, I see, this is the pleasure of what I do. I don't really think about retiring. I'm I'm just living a different life in a different uh you know situation uh but I'm still a a model Christian businessman in what I'm doing mm -hmm. and boy I tell you what once you can understand your core values who you are uh is and your purpose boy it'll just keep you going yeah that's fantastic I love it and I love your excitement for it Again, if you want to check out Bobby Albert online, check him out at valuesdrivenculture.com. You're listening to I Retire For Him. We'll be right back. Our work on this earth doesn't end when the paycheck stops. God calls us to be faithful for a lifetime. Whether you're looking forward to retirement or you're already there, our all small group study, Recreating Retirement, will help you understand, engage, and activate what God has for you in this fourth quarter of life. Join Retirement Reformation founder Bruce Brinesma as you consider your past, strengths, spiritual gifts, and your passions, and how they all come together as the call God has for you in these years. Connect with us on our online community group at Facebook.com Retirement Reformation, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, or if you'd like to bring Recreating Retirement to your church, email us at contact us at retirementreformation.org. Are you ready to start your life-changing journey today? Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him. Bruce and I are talking today about isolation, which leads to loneliness for seniors. And obviously, this podcast is I Retire For Him. It's for those of you who are fast approaching retirement or already in retirement. And what we're seeing, Bruce, is you, you read a study that talked about the impact of isolation on our senior population. And... There's a lot of issues being caused by it, which is why I said, Jim, we got to talk about this isolation, which leads to loneliness, which leads to addiction, which leads to uh, divorce, which leads to, excuse me, which leads to, I went out of order. I didn't mean to do that. Divorce, bankruptcy, and suicide. I think our bankruptcy, divorce, suicide, one of those orders. And, and those are the things we're going to talk about over the five weeks. Bruce, what did this study overall say? I know it didn't come to any conclusions. What did it say? The, the, basic, the basic message of the advisory report that actually came from the uh, Surgeon General's Office of the United States. And, the, and the, the, the title of the advisory report was The Epidemic of Isolation and Loneliness in the United States. And then the subtitle went down. It says, and the need for new kinds of connectedness. Mm. And, and so for our audience, if you want to go to go you know, just Google the U.S. Surgeon General and you can download a, a copy of that report. It's very illuminating. And, and I think many of the things they talk about, um, are kind of like, oh my, I didn't really realize that. Let me give you one example. They said that the impact of isolation and loneliness on our health is so dramatic. As a matter of fact, one of the, one of the, uh, parallels that they drew, or one of the implications they drew, uh, the effect of loneliness and isolation on our health was that it was equal to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Mm. Each one of us can kind of envision, some of us who are ex-smokers can really envision it, and those who aren't can imagine, but imagine smoking 15 cigarettes a day and the impact that would have on your health. What the Surgeon General's report said is that from a health standpoint, the results of loneliness and isolation are equal to that on our health. So if we're concerned about longevity or we're concerned about any uh, mental capacity, all the different issues that we face as we grow older, uh, the, the effect of loneliness, of isolation and then loneliness is, uh, accentuates each, each one of those. 
Well, and I think what we have to look at is as an encouragement. I want to head, head into the encouragement. So we've, we've got to bring hope to this conversation about isolation and loneliness because it's solvable, but it takes work. Just like anything with building connectedness takes work. And, and what happens, I, I think, with some seniors is yeah, everything's fine and they're connected into a small group and they're connected to their church. And then something like COVID comes along and all of a sudden people are unconnected for a year or 18 months. And then it's a lot harder I, I, to get reconnected. I remember even in elementary school, if I had been out for a week with the flu, going back that first day, you're like, oh man, I missed everything for a whole week. And of course, you know, a week in the life of a 10 year old was a lot of time as a percentage of perspective. And I hated going back in because I hated that reconnecting. It was so hard. I think it's intimidating. How can isolation, what is your ideas on how isolation could be eliminated in the life of a senior? Well, first of all, I think we need to look at the model that Jesus gave us. That's why he created, one of the reasons why he created uh, his community here on earth, which we call the church. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that the church is doing all that it can to reflect what it was that, that Jesus, the commands that Jesus gave and the model that he sketched out. Because each one of us has an individual role in that mosaic of his kingdom. And the, the, it, is, it is through that, those communities and that community that, in fact, we can stay connected. We can stay connected and we can reach out to be connected to those who have lost someone or, or someone uh, or that, that they just need to, be, to, to have, a, have an honest conversation and someone who really cares. And to, when, when Jesus said, love your neighbor, that's connectedness in all of its implications and all of its applications. And then to the degree to which we follow the, the leading of the Holy Spirit as it, as it shapes our lives and we are connected with each other as we love our neighbors as ourselves. I believe Jesus had that answer a couple thousand years ago. We just need to find additional and new ways to apply it in our circumstance. So isolation, really, you do a picture of isolation and it's, we're, we're separated from people and loneliness is what you feel when you are separated from those people. Loneliness is an emotion. Mm, okay. and it, loneliness is an emotion that, that, that is created by you, inside of you, and affirmed by you rather than looking outside and being open to connectedness which will then take, take both the isolation away, but the loneliness also. Loneliness can, is, is erased when we are involved with others for the benefit of the kingdom and to be able to be supportive of each other. It seems easy to say, but I have a feeling that for some listening today, Bruce, that this is a lot easier said than done. Uh, when you're isolated lonely. and you're feeling lonely, what do you think one great first step would be for somebody who's feeling lonely, for whatever the reason may be, what do you think the first step should be in starting to fight that loneliness? Because the enemy wants us to be lonely. The enemy loves loneliness because then he can mess with your head. So what's one of the ways we can fight this? Let me give you two steps. Okay. First of all, go read Psalm 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and that his love endures forever. And so when we embrace that knowledge that, there, that God does love us in our sinfulness, in our isolation, in our loneliness, seeing that there is a relationship that he wants for and with us. That's first. Go read Psalm 118. Secondly is go read back through the book of John and just underline, highlight, make notes of what Jesus says about our relationship. In there, in, in John, he talks about that we are not his servants, but, but because we have accepted him, that we are friends. When you've got a friend, you're not lonely. And so to realize, to, I think the place to start is Psalm 118 and the book of John. And then secondly, to look around and say, who needs my assurance? Who needs my help? Who needs me to reach out to, whether it be a neighbor with a pie uh, someone who needs their uh, lawn mowed or just someone to hold their hand in the hospital uh, or go with them to visit their parents who are in, in a facility. But, now, but who is Br someone that needs what you have and deliver it? So, but some people who are going to our churches don't even know Jesus. 
And one of the things that's driving their loneliness is that they truly are lonely. That hole inside of them, still empty. How can we best present Jesus as a solution for loneliness to our senior friends? What I've noticed over the last number of years, as a matter of fact, I have a book coming out here in the next couple of months that will address it, but how many seniors are not living with the fruit of the Spirit? And just to remind us, it's love, but then love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the things. Are those, when you ask yourself, am I experiencing those? And I think for so many seniors who don't know Jesus and there isn't his friend, uh, or are, are so disconnected from, from him and from everything else that in fact, that, that loneliness takes over. And the, the way to be able to, to think about it is how am I being, how am I learning about and reflecting the fruit of the Spirit in my life. Because when you experience those things, you will not be lonely because they are primarily other-directed and will impact how you connect with others. And of course, that's our role as Christians. You mentioned earlier on Facebook that the Retirement Reformation has a group that people can join. And a lot of people are joining because they're lonely. What? How else can people get involved with Retirement Reformation? What else is Retirement Reformation offer that can help deal with that loneliness? Because there's other ways to get connected, not just in that group. There's other ways to get connected with us, isn't there? Oh, there sure is. That We have all kinds of material that's everything from a, a prayer guide, which is a, you know, it's, it's that connection with God and that friendship piece I was talking about. In addition, uh, uh, there's a small group study called Recreating Retirement. And if you have any skill or talent or ability to facilitate a small group or a conversation, be able to bring three, four, seven, nine people together and to go through that recreating retirement uh, 10, uh, 10 step workshop. Uh, one of the things that it will show you is how God has prepared you for this next stage of life and to be encouraged by how he has prepared the other people in the group for the next stages in their life. So knowing what's next in our ministry journey is one of the key ways to be able to escape from, to change the narrative, and to go, not go from isolation to loneliness, but to go from loneliness to neighbor. Mm. And that is what Retirement Reformation is all about, connecting you to other people who are feeling some of these same exact same things. You are not alone in this. There's 50 million Christ-following retirees across, the, across this country, and many of them are struggling with the exact same things. This is, you're not alone. So don't feel alone in this. Let's solve some of that loneliness. Connectedness, Bruce, that was the best word coming out of this today. How to solve loneliness and isolation? Get connected and check us out online, retirementreformation.org or on Facebook, Retirement Reformation. Bruce, thanks for a great conversation. Looking forward to the next one. You've been listening to I Retire For Him, the voice and resource of the Retirement Reformation with founder Bruce Brinesville and your host, Jim Brangenberg. We're Christ followers stretching our faith in our retirement years so we can say, I retire for him. I retire for him. Thanks for listening to I Retire For Him with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg and Retirement Reformation founder, Bruce Brinesma. I Retire For Him is the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Most Christians tend to follow the world's pattern of rest and self-pampering during retirement. However, in your retirement, you can be focused on God's unique call to love, serve, and help others. This can be your best season of life if you take advantage of a life's worth of knowledge and experience and combine it with a greater freedom of time and money and invest it all in the generations both preceding and following you. The Retirement Reformation is encouraging Christians to find and follow God's call in all seasons and aspects of life, especially in retirement. Take time to sign the manifesto at retirementreformation.org and explore the wealth of resources available on our site. Join this movement of God and journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for Him go to retirementreformation.org.